Hi everyone, this is Lori from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm going to show you how to make some adorable little Christmas teddy ornaments and the digital download clip art that I used is from an Etsy shop by the name of AI Clip Art Corner and of course I'll give you um, the link to all that and so here's what I made and I use the soft chenille yarn with the lightweight red corduroy and a little tassel and then here's another little bear I think these turned out so cute and they're so soft and fluffy and then we have this little bear aren't they adorable so with that said, stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how I put these together. Okay, so to start, I printed all my images today on Epson presentation paper in matte. You can find it at any office supply store or you can go on Amazon and um, order this. That's what I did. And right now I believe it is on sale. So I'll go ahead and put all the links that um, you'll need on my blog at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and if you have any problems finding this please feel free to email me at happybirdsglitternest at gmail.com okay and I also used the self adhesive laminating sheets these are the thin sheets that only laminate um, the top part okay and you do not need a lamination machine so um, I'll also have the link to that as well. So for today's clip art, I used these adorable little bear images here. And there are 16 images that you get. And of course these are not all of them. These are just some of them that, that I'm showing you right here. Um, but they are just precious. And this clip art comes from a store on Etsy called AI Clip Art Corner and I will put a link to this on my blog at happybirdsglitternest at gmail.com or you can go to Etsy and type in the name AI Clip Art Corner and you'll see something pop up as you're typing this out that says find shops containing the name AI Clip Art Corner if you click on that it'll bring you right to the shop Okay, so um, we'll go ahead. Oh, I forgot to tell you that to print these images here um, to fit my two and a half inch circle punch, when I printed them out, I set the um, size to wallet size and I made sure the little box that says. Um, fit image to frame was unchecked okay and um, then of course I used the specialty paper settings so I just wanted to let you know that and we'll move on okay so for each ornament you're going to need some 80 pound cardstock and I purchased all my cardstock at Hobby Lobby it's the paper studio brand and they come in the, the paper packs. So um, the first thing I did was I punched out with my three inch circle punch three of the three inch circles and you're going to glue these all together using Fabri-Tac okay? and pay careful attention to the edges you don't want it so close to the edge that it'll squish out when you um, press it down and put something heavy on top of it but you want it close enough to where it will glue the edges okay and then you're going to be cutting three circles from your two and a half inch circle punch and you're going to glue those together as well with Fabri-Tac okay and then for your image you're going to cut out one of the white two and a half inch circles and you're going to cut your image out with a two and a half inch circle punch 
and you're going to glue this onto the one piece of white cardstock with your fabric tack okay and once you do that you're going to laminate just the top of it and that's what I'm going to do right now and we'll be back and we'll cut it out together okay okay so everything has dried completely and if you want to take the fine side of a Dollar Tree sanding block you can do that and um, just smooth out the edges a little bit and it doesn't have to be a lot just do it very gently all the way around and I'm just going around a couple of times you don't want to rough it up so much that you know it starts looking bad but just enough to smooth it out just a little bit like this okay and do the same thing on this and we're going to go all the way around I think that's about it See, that looks nice. Okay, so we're just going to kind of blow that off. And then next, I laminated the little image that we're going to use. Just on the top, of course, I laminated it. And I'm going to take my little precision scissors and without cutting into the image itself go all the way around and see how I'm barely moving my scissors and I'm turning the image I'm not turning my scissors I'm turning the image and uh, that way you won't cut into the cardstock and I'm just barely opening and closing my scissors all the way around And I have my scissors somewhat leaned against the um, the white cardstock underneath. Going all the way around, and of course the back part—it's um, not laminated or anything. That will fall off eventually as you cut. And just barely opening and closing the scissors. Okay, and so there we go, just like that. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> now you might want to go back, and if you happen to see anything that might need a little extra trimming, you can do that. I have this turned over now, so it's easier for me to see. You know, just kind of sand off the edges a little bit with your scissors. <laughs> and for the most part, I think this is pretty good. There we go. So we're going to be using this sweet little bear image from AI Clip Art Corner. And so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set this aside. And we are going to take our largest 3 inch circle. We're going to cover the back and the front with this inexpensive corduroy fabric and it's a red corduroy and um, if you don't have um, corduroy in the area that you're in you can also use other types of material uh, let me show you an example hold on okay so I showed you this fabric at the very beginning when when I first posted my video announcing 
my um, Christmas tutorials coming up and I purchased this at Hobby Lobby for practically nothing. It was 40% off and I only got about a fourth of a yard. So um, you could in place of the corduroy but something like this. This has the tiny sequins. They had two different kinds. One with big red sequins and one with little red sequins and I chose the one with the tinier of the two. Okay, So you could do that but you can also find lightweight corduroy for crafting online. Okay, So I just wanted to give you a couple options there but I chose the red corduroy um, because I was going for the look of um, traditional type uh, Christmas stockings and whatnot. So this was very easy. All I did was um, I took my big sticky roller brush <laughs> and I ran across this with my roller brush first because you know how sometimes this can pick up little pieces of lint and whatnot. So I'm taking my three inch circle base and I'm just putting this around the edges or I should say close to the edges but not enough to where it's going to squish out once I uh, place this down here hopefully <laughs> okay so I'm just going to do that all right Cut this out. All right. Now um, you're going to allow this to thoroughly dry, and then come back in with your scissors, and then cut all the way around it. So I'm going to allow this to dry first, and then we'll be back. And you want to do this to the front and the back, and make sure the lines are going um, uh, vertically on your ornament and when you turn it over to do the back you want to do the same thing make sure the lines are also going vertically this way to match the front okay so uh, we'll go ahead and do that okay so I'm going to start cutting and I'm just laying the scissor blades straight right along the edge here and I'm turning the circle as I'm barely cutting. And I'm just going all the way around. And this um, corduroy, it's just the lightweight kind for crafting. It's not the heavy duty, expensive kind. I was lucky to get this fabric for free we have a free table at the senior center and if anybody wants to bring anything they can set it on the free table for someone else to pick up and I love dropping things off on the free table all the time and um, so this one day I happened to go past there and there was all this corduroy, there were pieces of corduroy that they were somebody was giving away and I snagged it <laughs> okay so um, we did cut around this so now what you're going to do is you're going to do this kind of pull this outward like this because you're going to see some fuzzies when you do this see that which is fine because I mean honestly this part's going to be covered anyway but because I'm kind of OCD about stuff. Um, I like to go around and and cut it off a little at a time. And, you know, I, I try to do the best I can. And like I said, it's going to be covered anyway. So, you know, that's just me. <laughs> so you can choose to, to do this or not. So I'm just going to go all the way around and keep doing this until I have most of the fuzzies off. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. And like I said, I'm going to try peaches. Peaches. I'm going to try um, 
to line this up vertically like that. So you can kind of do that just by looking at this. All right. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll be back. Okay, so now this is finished and you want to find the best side for the front, okay? So I like this side for the front because this edge here is going to be exposed. So that's what I look for. And I'm using this as the back because it has a little something there. I'm not sure what it is, but um, so I'll use this for the back and that'll be probably covered up anyway with a bale. But um, so that's the front. Now the next thing I needed was something soft and fluffy to go around the edges. So I found this beautiful white chenille yarn and I purchased this from um, Amazon and they said that it was eight millimeters wide which I thought was a good width and the thing I like about this is it's flat. Now it doesn't have to be flat, okay? It could be rounded but I like the idea that it was flat because it made it so much easier to glue onto the edges and then you could see the front and the back on this, okay? Now, um, normally I would have looked at Hobby Lobby first, but um, I wasn't going to Hobby Lobby until the following week, and I really wanted to get this video up, so that's why I ordered from Amazon. And I will put the link to this on my blog, where all my other links are, <laughs> at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com. Um, so, a lot of the white yarns, they're beautiful, but sometimes, you know, you can see here and there where they might have some smudges on them, you know, just from being handled and everything. And um, so what I did was I took or I cut off um, the length that I wanted of this, okay, I just snipped it off. And then I just slipped it in a lingerie bag that you would wash all of your... Um, unmentionables in <laughs> and I would zi I just zippered it up and I just put it through the wash on delicate and when it came out um, I just put it in the dryer on low heat until it dried and it came out beautiful soft and fluffy and I think it turned out really nice so that's what I'm using is the yarn that I washed. <laughs> okay, so um, let's glue it onto the ornament now. Okay, so you want to start at the top, right here, okay, uh, with the yarn, and then just glue it all the way around. Make sure the lines are going vertically, okay? And you know what? Let me put my yarn on this side. Alright, and I'm just going to start by putting glue right on the edge of the ornament. And I'm not going to go all the way around, I'm just going to do this partially. Okay, this will do a little at a time. And when you start to lay this on, you want to make sure that it looks nice and even. You know, you have to make sure that it's straight right on there. That will make the difference in how your ornament turns out, whether it looks wonky and off with some of the yarn pushed further over or pushed further front, um, and what looks nice and neat. Okay, so you want to do your best there. Okay, and it's not difficult to do, it really isn't. I mean, look at me, I can do it, and I'm a shaky, shaky old grandma here. <laughs> With her shaky old grandma hands. And that's what you do. You just keep going around and try to do your best helps me when I just take my fingers like this and just kind of 
center it. Yeah, and try your best not to get any glue on the front of this because if you do that, it yeah, you really can't get it off without leaving a mark. Okay, and then we're down to the very tail end. So we're going to do this. Right here. And I have some glue on my fingers. I don't want to touch it again without the, getting the glue off first. Okay, so... Let's see about where we are here. I'll cut this off and look at it and decide how much more I need to cut off. I'm going to do it a little at a time. Okay, so that looks good. And this will be the top anyway. Alright, so I'm just kind of want to look at things again make sure everything looks fairly even here okay that looks pretty good I think okay just gonna fluff it out <laughs> alright so um, if you need to get any little pieces off I just take my sticky roller and do this. Okay, so we're going to allow that to completely dry and then we're going to come back and put our little teddy bear image in the middle and then we'll decorate him of course and do all that. Okay, so we'll be back. Okay, so I glued my little teddy bear image onto the red um, base that we made and you're going to have to be careful with this. You're going to, when you put this on, you're going to have to make sure that there's a red edge right here, the corduroy poking out, okay, and um, that it's even, all right, and centered. So I'm going to put a little bit here in the middle. You don't really need it clear to the edge. As long as it's glued in the middle part, that's fine. And it'll also help you be able to move it around and and um, center it without getting uh, any glue around the edges. Okay, so the lines are vertical. So that's what we're trying to match this up with. And I think this is actually pretty good. I'm going to pull a little bit of the white away so I can see that it's centered. Yeah. Actually, that's pretty good. Alright. So, I'm going to go ahead and press it down and allow this to dry, and then we'll be back. Okay, so today we're going to use these stickles on this little bear. I'm going to use a little bit of cranberry stickles and the diamond and possibly the gold I'm not sure yet now um, you can take a little piece of a cardboard fingernail file and cut it off with scissors and just gently rough up the areas that you want to um, add these these stickles on now you can go ahead and put it on there without doing any kind of sanding in those areas I have done it and it does stick very well but um, that's just in case you're concerned about it you can rough it up a little bit okay so 
I think what I'm going to do is start with the diamond stickles. And always test on your paper first, that first um, drop, because sometimes these go splat, and you don't want that to happen on your ornament. Okay? So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on the fur part of his hat. Okay, a little Santa hat. Now I can feel um, this particular bottle has been <laughs> giving me a little bit of issues every now and then. And so I just take a pearl head pen and slide it in there easily. And just kind of unclog it. I said easily, but there we go. <laughs> Good grief. That was a little tougher than easily. Okay, now it's coming out. All right. There we go. And then I'm going to do the little pom pom on top. And maybe just a little bit of the white on the parts of the tree where it looks like snow has fallen. You know, I'm not overdoing it because that's one thing you don't want to do is overdo it because then it looks like a mess. And I'm putting a little bit of the diamond stickles on the parts of the package that are white Okay, and then here and here. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, I might add a little bit on the white parts of his scarf. Not a lot, just a little. You don't have to cover everything, of course. Um, and I think with a cranberry stickles, let me test it out here first. I'm going to do just the hat. I think this is such a beautiful deep red. And of course, I'll put the links to everything. I bought these from Amazon um, individually. Okay, so I'm just, I think I'm going to leave just the hat done here and not put this on anything else. Now for the gold stickles, I might put a little on the star on the top of the tree. Just a touch, and maybe down here put a little bit of the gold, and hmm, I don't think I'll touch that. I think this is good enough. Um, like I said, there's a fine line between making it look nice and making it look look a mess <laughs> from adding too much glitter so I think that's just about right now I'm going to allow this to dry and then I'm going to come back and glue on a couple of elements and the bale and the um, charm the little tassel charm here so I want this to dry thoroughly and normally when I put stickles on any of my projects I let it dry overnight because then I'm doubly sure that I'm not going to pick up anything wet. <laughs> so we'll be back. Okay, so we're going to place a couple of snowflakes that I punched out of the Silly Winks 
fun foam with my um, snowflake punch and it's super thin that's why I like these I'm gonna put the gold behind the white and just kinda of layer it like this and then I'm going to I th think I'm gonna glue it over here on this side and I'll show you why in a minute let me get some of this Fabri-Tac glue and put this right here in the middle just a little bit and then I'm going to try to offset the top one so I can still see some of the gold peeking through okay I think that's good enough and then I'm going to place some glue on top of this and place this right about here and then I'm going to place a little little peppermint in the middle here I made these little peppermints probably <laughs> maybe eight years ago and I took the red and white perler beads I actually stood them up on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven and um, wait on a real low temperature and allowed it to melt so I had little peppermints you know and I had to do that this type of stuff even though it was a pain in the neck um, because you know eight years ago they didn't have all the little things that they have now um, it wouldn't be worth your time to do it now because you could buy them this small the little cane slices you know that you can purchase and uh, here we go and then let's see oh little candy cane I got these from a bag um, at Hobby Lobby I just snipped off the little top loop and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it right here like the teddy bear is holding it okay so I get some more fabric tack and let's see I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit right here I'm going to be careful because when I lay it down I want to make sure that's exactly where I want it can't move it around with glue on the back without making a mess on your ornament so ah, like this <laughs> yeah. yeah so um I'm going to allow that to dry and then we'll do the last part of it. Okay, so we're putting a little gold bale at the top and I purchased these from Hobby Lobby. It's in the jewelry making section and the brand is Jewelry Shop and that's where all the findings are. I think it comes like six to a bag now. And so I'm just going to put some Fabri-Tac here on the base and I'm going to eyeball this by holding this up and placing it right here in the middle where I think it should hang. Okay, so I mean you can line it up if you want on your mat, but I think I did a pretty good job. And then look over here on the back. Yeah. And then you're going to need, besides a bale, you're going to be needing an earring bale, which is different. And I'll have these a link listed um, to these on my blog. And um, you can buy them on Amazon. And what I did is I took a, a 6 millimeter jump ring, jump ring <laughs> and um, attached it to this little earring bale 
See how it's facing forward? The eye. So it's a little different than that one. The eye is facing sideways like this. And I just hooked on a little tassel that I purchased. Uh, I think it was last year that I purchased these for the little, the little golden book Christmas ornaments that I made. So um, I'll see if I can get a link to that as well and add that to my blog at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com Okay, so I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to use the lines, the vertical lines right here in the middle of um, the bale and try to follow it all the way down so I'll kind of know where to place this. I think that will help more than anything. See right here, yeah. Okay. okay, so I think everything looks good. So I cut a piece of um, the yarn and I measured it at 10 inches, okay? And I'm just going to slide this through the top here. Oh, good grief. And this bale is still drying, by the way. And I made sure that it wasn't all twisted, okay? And I'm going to put a little bit of fabric tack here right at the end at the top. And then I'm going to come in with the other one and lay it right on top and press it together. Okay. Now I'm going to allow all that to dry and when it dries then I'm going to move the yarn on around until this little area that I glued here is underneath the bale. Okay? So we'll be back. Okay, so we finished everything on this little ornament. I hope you really enjoyed this. And I will tell you though that although I'm putting a link to this yarn um, on my blog, you may still want to go to Hobby Lobby and buy it there because you'll probably end up spending a lot less than um, what I paid for this on Amazon. So with that said, you take care and God bless each and every one of you and I will see you next Friday for another video. God bless. Bye-bye.